Space Dog Radio. Radio from out of this world. From studio number four, Jet City, USA, this is a Space Dog Radio Show. I'm the Space Dog, along with Randall Hannell. What's up, Earth? How you doing? And the Sizzle's on board, fine, along with Space Dog Radio. How's it going, guys? And on the phone, again, we have a special guest, Mark Taylor Canfield, well known for his uh, syndication with uh, Huffington Post and many other progressive organizations with news you will not hear this week mark taylor canfield thanks for joining us again on space dog radio hey good to be here with you thanks so let's let's get started with news uh you haven't heard this week yes we definitely have some stories out of seattle again um there is an update on the federal grand jury situation here and i would uh refer people to a an article in the stranger which is a local alternative uh, magazine here in seattle and they uh, did a really good article about solitary confinement and the detrimental effect on folks. And the reason I bring that up is because uh, Matthew Duran and uh, Captain Olgenik and Manny Piper have been placed in solitary confinement at a federal detention center at CTAC, Washington, um, on contempt of court charges because they refused to testify at a federal grand jury investigating activists in the Northwest. So that's a story that we've been covering. And it ties in also to a national story, which is uh, there is at the present time a national review of the whole solitary confinement um, technique used in a lot of uh, prisons around the country. And the Stranger article points to a really good article that was based, that basically kind of condemns the whole idea and talks about the effects of solitary confinement on soldiers and things. And you know, even John McCain agrees with that. So. It's, it's an issue that just hasn't, you know, been reported. I mean, nobody is really talking about it. So kudos to The Stranger um, and Brendan Kiley for writing about it. But uh, it's a very serious issue that nobody seems to want to talk about in the United States. So um, the, the particular report, by the way, that they're talking about is um, by doc, uh, Dr. Atul Gawande, and it's a very well-researched article about the psychological and physical um, damage of solitary confinement, even for brief periods of time. So I would refer people to that article, The Stranger, and then also, if you, the only other way to really get information is to go to the Committee Against Political Repressions website at WordPress, and they actually also have some new information up there, and, you know, it's it's another situation where nobody is really reporting on this stuff. <laughs> but uh, as far as we know, um, there, this is the latest, is that there was a, uh, another document that was released um, by Judge Richard Jones. It was an affidavit that I guess you can find the, re- the redacted warrant um, on the No Political Repression website at, at WordPress. But they are talking about how uh, the FBI agents were targeting anarchists and saying that um, even though they admitted that many anarchists are, are completely law-abiding, they were referring to the, quote, Oregon conspirators and, um, you know, posts urging people to hit the streets and um, also referred to associates and conspirators, um, which according to what the website is saying, it pretty much admits that the FBI was casting a net over the entire anarchist movement, not really narrowly investigating specific illegal acts. So there's a lot of questions about the material in that affidavit because it, it tends to try, it tends to seem to incriminate people even though it doesn't mention any uh, criminal activity. So very interesting there. So that's the latest on that. And then yes, the uh, Mayor Mike McGinn last week kind of surprised a lot of people when he ordered the chief of police to end the Seattle drone program. These were um, unmanned aerial vehicles, unarmed, um, but they would have surveillance cameras. And according to, you know, we talked about this, I think, last time, or maybe not, I'm not sure, but they had, uh, the Seattle Police Department had unveiled their drone program, and they were claiming that, of course, they would only use them in times of emergency or major crime scenes, but... All of the activists in the ACLU and everybody else was wondering, wow, okay, so the next time there's a political protest, you see you're not going to be flying them above the crowd, huh? Hmm. Which a lot of people doubted. Well, 
the outcry in the community was so negative. Um, and by the way, there are currently 50 cities around the United States considering the use of drones. But in Seattle, the, you know, the public uh, hearings were so contentious and there were so many protesters that actually uh, just basically interrupted the proceedings that um, by the time the Seattle Council, City Council had their meeting on it, the writing was sort of on the wall, and the city council was actually ready to allow it to happen, but they just wanted to make sure that these towns were regulated. Well, the mayor came along and said, you know, let's just not do this. This is ridiculous. So he apparently convinced the police chief to just make a public statement, and this was just last week on Thursday, I believe. Yeah. But they said, okay, no more drones in Seattle. We're just going to drop that whole idea. So that's the good news. Um, and the... The caveat to that is that, of course, under a different city council and under a different mayor, you know, they could bring up this idea again. But one thing I want to point out once more um, that is something that's not being reported about this whole story is the fact that Seattle City Council's legislation to regulate these drones pointed specifically, their researcher pointed specifically to uh, aviation corporations really pushing this idea on local law enforcement around the country. So they pointed all the way back to those corporations as being, you know, part of the reason that this whole drone idea is popping up. But, well, you know, it's very, very much a concern considering what's happening in other countries around the world and drones, you know. Like yeah, it's and, weird because because <clears throat> Seattle really doesn't have too much in the way of aerospace companies. So, yeah, it's weird. That uh-huh. would happen. But, well, there's no Boeing here, no. No. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no Boeing is definitely a major employer here, and, and, you know, high-tech in general is a very big thing in Seattle, so I'm sure there were a lot of, you know, geeky technicians that were all, yes, it's going to be fun, fun, drones around, mm-hmm. but it's just not, uh, you know, Seattle's just not the place. Right. Maybe they'll end up doing it in other cities around the country, but not in Seattle, it's not for now. So in that way, I have to say, you know, I'm proud of our community for standing up and saying no, and I'm glad that the mayor, this, at least this time, had the sense to realize that the uh, political um, sentiment was against him and that regardless of, of what some businesses were saying about it decreasing crime, it was just a bad idea to begin with. So there's that. And then, I, you know, tying in with that whole, whole idea of surveillance, which I've actually written about it, you that in some other places, but there's a um, new computer program that people have been talking about and it, it was developed by Raytheon. People are concerned about it because it's basically... It was basically created to track people on social networking websites, which, if you think about it, you know, I guess it's not such a hard thing to do, considering that Facebook and Twitter and all of these these uh, sites are sort of linked in one way or another, so that it's not that hard to track people. But they've developed a system apparently to track people's movements and predict their future behavior by mining data from social networking sites. Mm-hmm. So there's um. There's a video at The Guardian that shows how they use these extreme, they're called extreme, extreme scale analytics. And that was a uh, system created by Raytheon, which is like the world's fifth largest defense contractor. And it can gather vast amounts of information about people from websites, including Facebook, Twitter, and in these other social websites. And the interesting thing is, is that it's actually named Riot, R-I-O-T or Rapid Information Overlay Technology. Mark Taylor Canfield, he's on Facebook. We'll put a link on spacedogradio.com as we do all the time when Mark's on. And uh, keep up the good fight there, Mark. Appreciate it. Hey, have a good weekend, everybody, and um, we'll talk to you again. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark. Mark Taylor Canfield, independent journalist on Space Dog Radio. From someplace in studio number four, this has been the Space Dog Radio Show. Thanks for listening. Be safe, be happy, and we'll catch you next orbit.